I'm Sarah, and I'm 30 years old. I'm also currently in the process of getting a divorce from my low-life husband. I no longer want to associate myself with the likes of him and his horrid family. For some reason, immediately after I said, I do at the altar, it's like a switch was flipped, and he'd been treating me quite badly once we became a unit. My in-laws at least showed their true colors from the beginning, their hatred wasn't as loud or prominent, but it wasn't rocket science to determine that they just didn't like me. It was clear that they only tolerated me because of my affiliations with Terry, but for some reason, the hatred and pettiness were slowly but steadily getting amplified as the years went by. And the straw that broke the camel's back was the recent vacation that we went on as a family. The vacation, as one would anticipate, was planned as a means of getting away and relaxing, and that we did. The plan went as follows, okay, so once we arrive in DR, we have to drop our bags off and unwind for just a bit, approximately an hour or so, because the reservations we made for the dinner at Passion happens soon after we land. Sounds good, and then we continue with the scheduled itinerary the next day, right? Next day, after eating at the restaurant, I don't know about you, but I'm going to get absolutely hammered. I'm with you on that one, me too. At this rate, everyone would be so hungover that we'd miss half of the next day's schedule. Well, you can go ahead and get wasted. I'm afraid father and I will be relaxed, and we're a bit too old to turn up like you guys. The planning and preparation may just all feel excited, that old, we all needed a vacation, and this was turning out to be a beautiful set of upcoming events that would breathe a lot of family love and memories. The planning process itself made me believe that the hatred and animosity that was festering throughout the years would cease, or at the very least lessen, because who turns out to be angry and hateful on vacation. Well, apparently, Terry's family does, and things seemed to be going well until we got to our hotel. For some reason, Florence and Judy were being irritable, cursing, and shouting all over the place. Greg and Matt were up to some foolish antics such as disrupting the functions of the hotel and causing a raucous. And as for Terry, he was too busy berating me for what seemed to be his fault because of his improper planning. Where are my socks, Sarah? Your socks? You mean the socks that I so clearly laid out for you to pack? You're my wife, you're supposed to pack these things for me. I don't know if you fell and hit your head, but I'm not your mother. Okay, I told you that your socks were on the bed, you even saw them for yourself. Whatever, I wish you didn't even come with us at all. Excuse me? Just at that moment, the rest of the gang came in. Where's the bar? I mean, trying to look for drinks everywhere. Sarah, be a doll and inquire for me, please. I don't think we've had enough time for that, aren't we meant to go to the restaurant? Oh, it's fine, just go and do your job. Excuse me, my job? It's worth mentioning that I work at a restaurant as one of the top chefs, even though I'm well esteemed for the work I do. My in-laws, and even Terry sometimes, just view me as a poor waitress, this me telling them all the time that I'm not. Oh, she didn't mean it like that, Sarah. Don't get all upset like you normally do, right? I didn't mean anything by it, just a slip of the tongue. I mean, you do work as a waitress, don't you? How many times do I have to tell you, I am a chef, a good one at that? Now, now Sarah, don't get hot-headed. Let's just all take a deep breath. I was suspecting that people were just a bit tired and irritable from the flight, and once we got accustomed to this new and beautiful culture, we'd probably relax and unwind, and our relaxing vacation would finally begin. But boy, was I wrong. The restaurant was a disaster, as I was embarrassed by the behavior of my in-laws. They were constantly complaining about everything, and I was also subject to their constant complaining since I work in the restaurant industry. They thought that I knew absolutely everything about every restaurant that ever existed. Sarah dear, this sushi is tasting a bit off, why is that? I, I don't know, the ambience of this place is also off. Could you maybe talk to your restaurant friends and find out if they can change that? I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I don't work here. No need to be rude about it, he's just asking a question. 
And honestly, you should know more about this stuff since you work in the restaurant industry. As a chef, you mean? How to make that correction before she loses her mind. At this point, people were staring at us, and I was feeling more and more defied. I wish the floor would just open up and swallow me whole. The vacation was looking to be a fiasco. I was always being berated, and if I wasn't being yelled at, I was being sent around by my kin to take care of everyone's needs. It wasn't looking like a vacation to me because of how they were treating me. I was even beginning to suspect that the only reason why they brought me along was so that they had someone to boss around and bully. My suspicions were confirmed when I found out the itinerary of fun activities that were planned didn't involve me at all. For the next two days, whenever I would wake up, I would find all their rooms completely empty. After lounging around for hours, doing nothing and awaiting responses from the rest of the gang, they'd all be stumbling in, half drunk and happy, coming from a seemingly great time of enjoyment. Oh my goodness, did you see when dad fell off the boat when we were tubing? That was hilarious. Hey, it wasn't that funny, come on, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Hey guys, oh hey darling, how are you? What happened? I thought we were meant to be going tubing together. There was a pause, nobody looked like they wanted to say anything. It almost looked like they were racking their brains for a sufficient answer. Finally, Terry said, oh, you were sleeping, so we didn't want to disturb you. Okay, but you could have woken me up, this is meant to be a family vacation, right? Well, it turns out I was actually wrong about my presumptions because, as they were by, there were more signs of me only being there as the help and not as someone to enjoy it alongside the family. But that's not even the worst thing that happened to me. Our one-week getaway to DR was coming to an end, and we were all packed up and ready to go. We all had one last dinner, which was relatively calm, and we went to bed. Our flight was set to take off in the afternoon, meaning that we had the morning time to prepare our final bits and bobs and leave the lovely island. Because of this, I woke up at around 9 a.m., which wasn't too bad, considering we were meant to board the flight at 3 p.m. To my utter horror and shock, I woke up to yet another empty house, but this time it seemed as though everyone had left, Terry, Florence, Judy, Greg, and Matt, all of them had just up and left because their bags weren't anywhere to be found. I was completely flabbergasted. I began frantically calling Terry, and as I felt my anxiety begin to peak, I ended up calling anybody. I even called the front desk, and once I did, all of my doubts were confirmed. The lady at the front desk informed me that everybody had left at around 8 a.m. She too shared in my confusion, as she had no idea that I was the only one left. Why would they leave me? How could they leave me? I sat there, just trying to understand what happened to me, and the more I sat with this hurt and pain, the more it festered into anger and bitterness. I knew that these people didn't like me. I knew that sometimes they'd even do things for my detriment, such as leaving me out of the previously mentioned list of activities that we were meant to do together as one, but I didn't know the true expense of their craziness. I was going to try and call again, but I decided against it. I needed to strategize something to get my revenge, because I had had more than enough of their shenanigans. Additionally, I had to remind myself after calming myself down from the panic attack that I had earlier that I was in the gorgeous and marvelous DR there was no way that I was going to waste my time crying and moping about my situation, even though I had every right to. I was going to make the most of this trip, and so I decided to extend my vacation. Luckily, I was able to extend my visa as well as my reservation at the beautiful resort. I swear, I am now a firm believer in miracles because you'd never guess what happened to me. I was able to move to a smaller room since I didn't need the extra space and continue my vacation in a way that was fulfilling to me instead of constantly being blindsided by not being privy to the day's activities and schedules. I inquired at the desk and booked all of the activities that I was able to do. There were cruises and casino tours, and I also engaged in hiking, tubing, shopping, and glamping. Not only did I do all of those crazy and extravagant things, but I met a group of single ladies around my age. We all decided to chat with one another, and it was a grand time. 
These ladies looked so free, and I even felt comfortable enough to disclose my embarrassing and abusive relationship with my toxic and weird husband-in-laws, and they were ready to fight for me. I tell you, there is nothing sweeter than a group of good girlfriends who are always ready to have your back. This group of girlfriends accompanied me throughout most of my activities, and I couldn't be happier. I was extremely enjoying my newfound solitude, but I was also ready to share my experiences with a genuine group of people, not like my low-life husband and his equally low-life family members who hated my guts for some reason. You must be wondering how long all of this took. Well, it took me yet another week in DR to complete all of these amazing tasks, and I certainly couldn't be happier. You also might be wondering about Terry and the rest of the toxic crew. Well, here's what happened, on the day that they had left me behind, Terry had called me once they arrived home, and this is how the conversation went, hello? Hello, I was very calm and collected. I think they were expecting me to be frantic and overwhelmed, which I was, but I didn't want to give them the satisfaction of knowing that their sadistic actions had worked on me. You sound well. Oh, I am. I hope you're well too. I hope that the flight was safe. At that moment, I heard voices in the background. I must have been put on speaker. Yes, their offline was fine. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I'm going out later on tonight. With who? That's none of your concern, I'm afraid. Excuse me, he is your husband, and we are your family, so it is our concern who you're going to be meeting with. Oh, really? It's funny you say that, because the last time I recalled how husbands and families don't abandon each other. I woke up to an empty house. I knew you trolls hated my guts and only strung me along on this trip so that I could act as the help. What? That's preposterous. Oh, save your faux sympathy, your acting is as good as fish-flavored ice cream, horrendous. You fools did manage to make one grave mistake, though, you left me in DR how could you be so foolish? It's actually a good thing that you left, because I can really enjoy my vacation all to myself. I won't have to hear any incessant nagging from any of you. Why need childish, toxic babies? And Terry, if it wasn't clear from the tone of my voice, I want a divorce. And since I'm a newly single lady, and since you all want to know who I am going out with tonight, I'm going out with a lovely man they met, well, who promised to show me a good time. Unfortunately for you guys, you couldn't break me down. In fact, the more you tried, the more you failed. So, it's disappointing you all, but I am better than all of you combined. So please don't worry about me because it seems like the new life that I have established for myself will be more than enough to sustain me and my happiness. I hope you all have the day that you think you deserve to have. And before I could let anyone speak, I hung up the phone. Immediately afterward, I was being bombarded with calls and texts from my husband and in-laws, well, I guess ex-husband and in-laws at this point. Of course, I ignored them more and proceeded to go on with the rest of my evening. Throughout the extra week of my staying in DR, I was also receiving calls and texts from these people, but I ignored them all week long, making sure to post the best pictures and reels to my Instagram. They would comment under my pictures trying to get my attention, but my followers would viciously attack their hateful comments, leading them to cower under pressure. As a celebrated chef, I managed to accrue a decent enough following so that people like this would be dealt with accordingly, but in this circumstance, the satisfaction I got from seeing their trolling behavior was amplified because this particularly hit close to home. Even though they were being ripped to shreds in the comments, it wasn't enough to quell my thirst for revenge. I needed to hit them where it hurt. My special and extra long vacation came to an end, and I had to return to the awful reality that was waiting back home for me. When I got back home to Florida, I opted not to return home but rather I would lodge in a hotel just to keep my awful enemies in further suspense since I wasn't updating them of my whereabouts. I returned to my beautiful job and proceeded to post about it so that they would know that I am indeed home, but I just don't want to communicate with them. 
At this point, I had racked up a total of a thousand messages and missed calls from Terry, Florence, Judy, Matt, and Greg, but still, I wouldn't engage. I still hadn't thought of my revenge, and then suddenly it hit me. I knew what I was going to do to get my revenge. I decided to disrupt the close family structure that they all had. They seemed to enjoy banding together to attack me, but let's see how they feel if they felt as though members of the group were being toxic towards one another. I'm of the firm belief that people who are so miserable to the point of trying to ruin other people's lives have the most fragile self-esteem, which can fall apart all at once. It's worth mentioning that this family had a business that they ran together. Maybe it was during these business hours that they discussed their plans to ruin my life, but not anymore. About a month had gone by when I decided to call Harry and say hello. Terry? Sarah, oh my goodness, it's so good to hear your voice, babe. The house has been a mess without you. I don't know what it is, but things just haven't been the same. I miss you. We all miss you. Where have you been? Why haven't you been staying? I'm afraid that that is none of your concern, however, I wanted to say something that's been weighing heavy on my conscience. Sarah, please don't say that you didn't mean what you said about the divorce, right? On the contrary, I meant every word of what I said the last time we spoke. I came to tell you some harrowing news, though. What is everything okay? Well, since I want to do four, so I thought it would be best if I came clean to you about the things I saw and heard when we were together. The reason why I didn't bring it up sooner was because I was afraid, but now I have nothing to lose. You see, I would often overhear Florence and Matt talk about how they favored Judy and Greg over you. They said that, oh we can prophetic, and the only reason why they still kept you in their lives is so that they could mistreat you. Remember the way that you guys were mistreating me on vacation? That's how they'd mistreat you too. Think about it, that time they made you drive three hours just to get to a store that was already closed, and then they told you that they had no idea that it would be closed. Well, guess what, they knew. What? That's ridiculous. Mom and Dad would never. Oh, I'm not finished. Additionally, Greg and Judy would partake in the mischievousness as well. Do you remember how Greg and Judy went on that seminar, the one that you wanted to go on so badly? Well, turns out there was an extra invitation that could have been yours. With the last, they gave it to your cousin Charlie instead. You're lying. There's no way that they would do that to me. I'm their brother. You're lying to me. You think that them sending you pictures was them trying to make you feel included? You should know that there is a whole separate chat group that they have without you, just like how you have a separate chat group without me. Really? No, I don't believe you. If you want to remain oblivious, be my guess, but I think it's also worth mentioning that your precious and dear mother is cheating on your dad, and she's been cheating on him since seven years ago. His name is Frederick. Frederick the contractor, the very same. I, I don't believe you. I think you're lying. Don't believe me, fine. See for yourself. At that moment, I bombarded him with a slew of texts and email threads that backed up everything that I was saying. It turns out that when you have a strong following, there's a type of people who can get any information that you want. Screw hiring a detective or private investigator, these people, with the real sleuths, because the internet is forever and I have smart followers. They managed to acquire information that would help me in this investigation. They got all of the necessary receipts for me to dangle in front of Terry as one last goodbye to him and his dreadful family. Unsurprisingly, this caused a lot of tension and uproar among them, and I managed to catch the full fight because of the cameras that were installed in the house. Terry appeared to have invited his family over to have this big discussion, and even more juicy gossip was spilled. It turns out that Judy was also sabotaging Greg and would steal small amounts of his funds whenever she could. She had apparently been doing it for years, and he was not happy at all. Additionally, Matt had also been cheating on Florence. He'd been having an affair with a co-worker for approximately three years now. 
The whole house was a mess with people screaming and throwing things left, right, and center. It seems like everybody was mad at everybody, and I was enjoying the show with some popcorn and soda in my lap in my lovely hotel room. Fast forward a couple of months, and the family business that these people ran was dissolving rapidly. It appears as though the found in cohesiveness that was present was bad for business, and people stopped subscribing to their services. If eventually they went bankrupt, which was a shame because the business had been in the family for generations. It's safe to say that they have indeed brought shame and disgrace to their family name, and in addition to them not wanting to speak to each other, their extended families don't want to speak to them either. They are all miserable and isolated from one another, and it's safe to say that I got my revenge. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.